Here's an overview of the assignment you have in front of you. I'm asking you to create five logos. You can see these five here. Please use your two initials, first name and last name, to create your logo. Your logo must be two letters only. If you wanted to use more than that, you can email me and ask. Maybe you have a double first name or something. You are not to use any shapes or symbols. I also don't want you to use a decorative typeface. The video, tutorial, the video that you looked at that talked about typefaces will explain what a decorative typeface is. So please don't use anything decorative. I want these designs to be yours. I don't want them to be beautiful because the typeface that you chose is so ornate. Um, so you'll use black letters, black characters on a white artboard, just like these are. Black characters on a white artboard. No colors, please. Your logo should use up the full 5x5 five five artboard. See how big these are? They're not tiny little logos in the middle of it. This one's a little small, but not too much. Um, and they should be centered on it. So you'll be using this selection tool up here to center things, select and center things. Please use a different typeface for each logo. Even though this typeface is repeated once over here, it's only once. So if you use the same typeface more than once, that might be okay, but the design should be completely different. Um, you're gonna use Gestalt theory to make these logos work, to make them effective designs. Let me zoom in here and explain to you how the Gestalt theory is applied to each logo. So I'll press my space bar to move this up and command negative to zoom out a little bit. These keyboard shortcuts, shortcuts are very handy to know. All right, so these two characters in the logo have been positioned in close proximity to one another, but they're not overlapping. So proximity is one of your gestalt terms. You'll use proximity to make your logos effective. The G, see this lowercase g, it's nested into the arm. This is the arm of the R. And that fills the open space here of the R. And it allows the viewer to see these two letters as one logo mark. In this next one, I'm using the Gestalt term of continuity. It's because the two letters overlap here that your I will easily travel from the R and into the G. See this negative space here created by the spaces? When I closed, I could scooch this out, but I didn't. I wanted to close up that space. And a nicer spot could have been here, but I don't like this little lump, and I don't like that little bump, tight space there. So the best place I could choose was here. This is not one of my favorites, but it's a working logo. The next one, oops, I used the Gestalt term of similarity. These two letters, the two characters, are the same typeface. They both have this same knob at the end of the arm. See this knob here, right there? And they both have the same uh, vertex in the curl. So because they're the same typeface, that's the gestalt term of similarity. When you use similarity, it reinforces unity, which is another one of your earlier vocabulary terms. So again, the G and the R are overlapping, just like that last one. Let me use this tool. You can see the overlap area right here, which adds to the continuity. Now, the fourth one here, you can see I did something different. I used a white G. The only way you can use a white letter is if you put it on top of a black one. Obviously, if I use a white one, you can't see it. 
so uh, on the white background. So the reason I chose this white letter on this black background is to explain the difference, the concept of figure and ground. You would assume that the ground is the white background and that the figure are the letters. But in this case, I made one of the letters white. So it creates a black, it create, makes the R into a black ground. So there's some figure ground uh, work going on in here. Notice that the G is, it bumps outside of the R in these two spots and then over here as well. So that's the Gestalt theory of closure. Even though you can't see all the edges of a G, you still recognize it as a G because your eye naturally closes that shape. In this last design, which I'm not very fond of, but it's a design. I have a very static R, that's one of your old vocabulary terms, and a very dynamic G. The rotation of the R creates a static figure upon which the G appears to sort of hang. The G is more dynamic because it's rotated, and the characters, due to their overlapping nature, have some continuity. Your eye moves right from the R and into the G. So that's, that's the whole of your assignment here. My favorite one out of all these is probably this middle one. I kind of like the first one too, but the middle one is my favorite. I feel like it's... Uh, just a beautiful, simple, elegant design. So now I'm going to show you how to export just Artboard 3. I'll choose File and Export, and then I'll choose Export As. I'm going to export this as a PNG. So I'm going to choose Use Artboards, and in Range, I'll choose Artboard 3. I'm going to export this to my Download folder so that I can then post it on the discussion topic. There we go.